Hey guys, it's your local teacher here, and I'm... I have my fan with me today. Oh god. <laughs> it doesn't like it when you touch it, so I'm just gonna let you be there. Honestly, what is happening to Scandinavia? We used to be a super cold continent in general, and now it's like... <laughs> Recording a video, I'm literally dying. Anyway, today we're gonna do a tutorial video on Polybrush using Unity 2019. What? Saiku makes tutorial videos in 2019? I know, I'm surprised too. If you have any questions or need any help, let us know in the comments. And also ask us in the Discord server where we talk about game development, Unity, etc. If you wanna join us, the link to that is in the description below. So one important note is that I'm using Unity 2019.3 in this video, which is the latest beta version. And I suggest you use either Unity 2019.2 or above. The reason why is because in Unity 2019.2, they updated Polybrush by adding a new feature, which is the prefab scattering mode. Really, really important. We're gonna take a look at it today as well. And on top of that, it is now available through the package manager as well, which is really important too. So I'm gonna get started by showing you how to install Polybrush and then show you how to use it for your level design. But first, this video is brought to you by Nature Manufacture. Nature Manufacture is the creator of the popular Unity tool River Auto Material. River Auto Material or RAM as it's also called, gives you the ability to create very advanced rivers and lakes with flow map, riverbed shapes, and textures on it automatically. You simply drag and drop river material on any mesh or you could create it using the advanced spline tool with profile system and a stream will be generated for you. RAM is also very lightweight on performance. It will run well on even VR and mobile as well as other platforms. You also get access to 47 high quality ground textures, a set of river textures, particle effects, and some more assets within the asset pack. So make sure to check out River Auto Material through the link in the description. And now with that being said, get Unity ready, get your fans ready, and let's get into it. Alrighty, so here we are in Unity 19.3. That's right, so I'm running the latest version as I said before, it's in beta. We are running the latest, the new theme, because the new theme is life, honestly. I am so excited to be using this. Um, but yeah, smash like if you guys are excited for this video and hit subscribe to stay up to tune for more content. And on that, let's get started. So first and foremost, we're gonna wanna install Polybrush into our project because like I said before, it is now available in the package manager. So we're gonna head over to window and then get into the package manager. And in here, I already have it highlighted for some reason, but what you wanna do is you wanna go into advanced and make sure that you have the show preview packages option enabled because Polybrush is still a preview package in Unity. So that means it's not gonna display unless you have this option turned on. After that, you just have to find Polybrush in here and and hit install. All right, cool, so Polybrush is now installed. However, you will see that we have three new options pop up in the package manager, which is called samples. So basically, Unity is providing us with a shader asset pack, so an example shader asset pack, um, if you wanna use it, obviously. It's basically for color painting and also texture painting or texture blending, rather, which are two features of Polybrush as well. You don't have to use them, but I'm gonna do it in this video in order to show you guys how to, how to actually make use of them. Um, you don't have to import every single one of them, basically lightweight render pipeline, which is actually called universal render pipeline now in 19.3. So they have one for the lightweight render pipeline, one for the HDRP or high definition render pipeline, and the standard render pipeline. I'm using the standard one, so I'm just gonna hit import into project here. All right, there we go. So now that that's imported and we have Polybrush installed as well, let's close down the package manager. So next stop is opening up the Polybrush window. So what we're gonna to do is we're gonna head over to tools polybrush and then open up the polybrush window and there it is the beauty itself so this is the polybrush window which you're gonna use in order to change the settings or pick whatever feature you want to use so speaking of the features actually we have five different features or tools using Polybrush. So the first tool we can start by from the most left is sculpting on meshes. And then we have a tool for smoothening out the areas of a mesh. We also have painting vertex colors on meshes, like I said before, which is also why we imported the shaders. 
We also have the brand new scatter prefabs on Mesh's tool or scatter prefab mode. And finally, we have texture blending, which is also making use of the shaders that we imported for a minute ago. But let's get started by doing the basics. First, let's create a mesh, a surface for ourselves, which we can use to modify through Polybrush. I'm gonna go into game object, 3D object and simply create a plane in our scene. Cool, so we got this plane going on now and one thing I'm gonna get started by doing is simply painting our plane just a little bit. So for painting colors, let's pick the color tool. So now you can see that we have color paint settings appear here and it is there is a warning saying that it doesn't look like any of the materials on this object support vertex colors and that's because we're still not making use of the shader that we imported before. And we can very easily fix this, so just follow along here. I'm basically gonna go into the samples folder, which is the folder that Unity imported when we imported the shader asset files. Go into Polybrush and then 1.0, and here we will have a folder called shader examples. So in this, we have a couple of different shaders. The first one is for texture blending, and the second one is for color painting. Obviously the second one is more relevant for us right now, so what I'm gonna do here is actually follow along because this is a Unity tip as well. Right click on this shader, go to create, and pick material. Now what this does is because you right clicked on the shader file itself first, instead of clicking just anywhere in the project view, this material automatically makes use of the vertex color shader that we just right clicked on. There you go, I'm a very nice guy like that I know. <laughs> Next up is really easy, we just simply have to drag the material file we created onto our plane game object. And now when we highlight the plane one more time, you will see that the warning message is gone. Be gone warning. So next, we can simply hit the white area here, which is the color picking tool, and just simply pick a color. So let's go with some kind of green here. Um, maybe, yeah, let's go with this one. Now that I picked the color, I can simply go ahead and start painting on this plane and you will see the differences right away. And you can see how easy it is to use this tool. And speaking of ease of use, you can see that we have two other fields as well on top of color paint settings. Now brush settings is one of the fields that allows you to adjust the brush settings, which is <laughs> kind of obvious, but I just wanted to say that. And we can set like, for instance, the outer radius to be 0.39, which is much, much smaller now, and it is more precise. We can also set a different strength for our brush which is gonna allow us to adjust the intensity of our color or of our scattering, like how many prefabs we're scattering, etc. So these are basically the two most relevant and important settings in here. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue by painting a little bit like this. All right, so we got some kind of painting going on and I'm not putting too much effort on actually doing the painting. So I'm just gonna go to the next feature, which is Sculpt Tool. So using the Sculpt Tool, we can basically move the vertices. And in this case, because it is a plane, we can simply raise or lower it, just like in the terrain system. So basically, I'm just gonna set the Sculpt Power to something larger, like 15, and then simply start painting again, just like I did with the Paint Tool. All right, so I've raised and lowered some parts and you can also lower by holding down control and holding down the left mouse button. So holding down the left mouse button only will raise it, but holding down control while doing so will lower it. And then we obviously have the smooth mesh geometry as well. And the smooth tool is just like in the terrain system, it allows you to smoothen out the harsh edges a little bit. Um, however, I kind of am in favor of the harsh edges in this map because obviously it makes it look like a little bit more like a mountain so that it doesn't look way too flat or too less shaped. Um, this kind of feels like it adds a little bit more personality to the terrain, but maybe I can just have a little bit here. So after that's done, the most fun part of it all, in my opinion at least, is the scatter prefabs on meshes. The scattering mode basically allows you to literally paint down prefabs on a mesh. So all we have to do is enter the prefab scattering mode 
in the polybrush window and we can see that under current palette it says drag prefabs here so literally all we have to do is let's say for instance i pick to use this cactus i just have to drag this cactus into this field right here and then highlight it using this little tick and then i can select the cactus here and it will spawn these options so we have the frequency rate which basically means how often you want this cactus to spawn while you're painting we can also randomize the scale so if you don't want it to be way too static or look like the same one as you placed before you can randomize rotation and scale for that reason so let's go ahead and select our plane in the hierarchy and now you can see that we can paint in the cactuses they're kind of too small for you know compared to the size of the terrain or the plane so let's undo this and then in the polybrush window let's set a uniform scale and have the scale to set like maybe something around seven I think now it's looking a little bit better and you can see how easily I can just paint in as many cactuses as I want to using polybrush and obviously we can add even more prefabs and you can paint multiple prefabs all at once so for instance I have ticked both the cactus and the tree which now means that I'm painting both of them at the same time. However, you can see that the tree is small, but the cactus remains in the size that we've modified for it. So all we have to do is simply just select the tree and set a different scale for it. So let's say seven for this as well and then start painting and you will see that now it's too big. <laughs> of course, why not? And there you go, folks. So that's pretty much polybrush for you. Um, I'm gonna show you guys in just a second how to use the texture blending as well, but I just wanna show you guys that you can use multiple or you can paint multiple prefabs all at once. And then all you have to do if you wanna, for instance, only paint the tree is untick the cactus, which basically this tick is the one that decides if you're gonna paint it or not and then simply start painting again. Cool, awesome, I think this is ready for steam. <laughs> no, obviously not, uh, just kidding. But this is a good start, I guess, and it's a good way of getting started with polybrush in general. But obviously you guys are more creative than me, so I look forward to see your creations as well. Now, finally, I wanna show you guys how to get started with the texture blending as well, because it is a little bit more, I'm not gonna say difficult, but it basically requires one extra step or a couple extra steps um, compared to painting colors. So let's do it. First and foremost, we're gonna go into paint textures. And in here, you can see that we have another warning message saying that we don't have a material on this object that supports texture blending. Be gone, warning. So all we have to do is once again, go back into the samples folder, polybrush 1.0, shader examples. And then in here, pick the other shader that we have, which is texture blend, right click on it, create, and then once again, create a material. Now let's assign this material to the terrain. I keep saying terrain, I mean the plane. <laughs> I'm just so used to it because this is a terrain in general too. Like if you speak from a game perspective, but from a game development perspective and Unity perspective, it's not a terrain. Now in this material, all we have to do is you can see that we have different texture fields. So we simply have to assign textures to these fields. So for instance, let's say we're gonna use this hill A texture for as for texture one, and then hill B for texture two, land A for texture three, and just let's keep it like that. So in the polybrush window, you will now see that these all appear in the texture paint settings. So all we have to do now is simply in the scene view, just paint around just like we did before. And of course, these are not really the best textures that I could find. Um, they were just a part of this asset pack that I'm using. So I just wanted to keep using it instead of like confusing you guys. But this is basically how you use this. All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial video on Polybrush. If you did, make sure to smash like on this video and hit subscribe for more videos. Honestly, I've always wanted something like prefab scattering mode in Unity, but built into Unity because I was always using external third-party assets from the Unity Asset Store for accomplishing it for my level designs because it's really important. And now that it's actually integrated into Unity, officially speaking, I'm really happy about that. Let me know in the comments what feature of Polybrush you're looking forward to using the most because I'm probably gonna use the prefab scattering mode a lot. So let me know what you guys think about that. If you have any questions or need any help, let us know in the comment section below. And also we have a Discord server with over 10,000 like-minded game developers where we talk about game development in general, Unity, etc. So if you guys wanna be 
be a part of that, feel free to join using the link in the description or by going to discord.gg forward slash polyround. And on that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. I would also like to give a thanks to all of our incredible Patreon supporters from July and special thanks to Cupola, Infinity PBR, Flu Joey, Academy of Games.com, Sebastian Baggy, Glasswell Entertainment, Couch Ferret, Tim Gunn, and Stephen Eddy. You guys are awesome. Too late, too late.